Hi, I'm Kara and welcome to camp where college applications are made perfect. I'm a college freshman, so I just finished the college application process and now I am here to explain it to you. As always, timestamps to important moments in the video are going to be linked in the description box below so you can skip to whatever you specifically want to learn about and there will be links to additional resources on this subject down there as well. Today we're going to be talking about the college resume, what it should look like, how to make one, and why you need it. To begin, let's unpack if you're even going to need a college resume. So most colleges, as you saw when we looked at application portals a couple of videos ago, will have set locations for you to input your extracurriculars and your activities. However, some colleges will require a separate resume. You should treat the separate resume as an opportunity to go in depth on the things you mentioned earlier in your application. You know, a lot of them have those word limits and this resume is your chance to expand on those activities a little bit more. And you can also provide additional information or examples that you may not have had space for in the application portal. That said, even if you're not required by any of your schools to write a college resume, I would still recommend writing one. In fact, it's one of the first things I would do before even approaching the application process because it really gives you a great idea of the things that you've achieved and the sort of student that you're going to present yourself as throughout the rest of your application. Having a college resume is useful for more than just filling out the blanks on the application portal though. Um, it'll also help you if you're trying to get a competitive merit scholarship or get into a competitive school. And it'll give you a lot of ideas for things to feature in interviews or things where you have to talk one-on-one -on -one with another person because you already have that sort of encapsulated within your resume and so it's in your mind. Now let's move on to structure. So a college resume is generally going to be a little bit different from resumes you might have written in the past. A standard rule of thumb for resumes is that they should never be longer than a page. However, that is not usually the case with the college resume. So for the college resume, you want to feature pretty much everything you've ever done that you can come up with, what leadership position you may have held within that organization, what you did, and in the case of your community service, what uh, communities, what populations, had you helped. Now, everyone is going to tell you to write the college resume a little bit differently. So in this video, I'm going to be outlining the structure that I use. However, many of the links I'm linking in the description box below have a completely different method of writing the college resume. So I would advise watch the video, read the links, and in the end, just choose whatever format you feel is the best fit for you. So let's kind of get into the nitty gritty. So in terms of overall categories, in terms of headings I would use, I would talk about education, honors and awards, activities, community service, internships, employment, and personal interests and skills. So let's begin with education. Simply list your high school and your graduating class. There's no need to list anything like GPA or test scores because all this information the college will already have. There's no need to waste any space on relisting something that they already know. Honors and awards. So this is your opportunity to list any and all honors and awards you've ever received. This is your chance to go a little more in depth than you would normally go on your regular application. So this goes beyond things like AP Scholar, National Merit Scholar, but if you were ever in a team that advanced to regionals and something, I would put that, you know, if you were ever got some fancy solo in choir or band, I'd put that down, obviously. Drum major, something like that, that would be an honor and award. As well, I want to briefly touch on scouting because I was a scout. So it's more than just, you know, Eagle Scout, Gold Award Girl Scout, but if you got like the community service bar in one of those organizations, or I know Silver Torch for Girl Scouts, that's also something that you would note here. You know, I mean, the more honors and awards that you have listed, the better. So for the actual structure of the way you're going to list it, um, I would put the title, what it was, the years, the high school grades that you earned that award. So like 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, whatever. And I would also put a description of what you had to do to earn the award as well as some, some other things. So I actually have an example. I'm going to, I have it right here. I'm going to read it off and then we'll kind of talk through it together as we go. So this is from my own resume. I listed Team EA State Choir First Chair Alto. So that's an example of something that maybe you wouldn't immediately think of as an award, but that would count in the honors and awards section. I then listed 10, 11, and 12, as those were the years that I achieved that award. And then here's the description that I used. So it's bullet pointed. We'll talk a little bit more about the bullet points later. But the first bullet point is beginning in July, students prepare for a series of contests that continue until January. So I give them a time frame here because it's a pretty long time frame. And it speaks to the time investment that you're putting into achieving this award. So if it's an award, like I know Gold Award Girl Scouting is, I believe you have to get 80 hours of community service, I would definitely mention that. 
Um, the, my second bullet point is the goal is to win a spot as a member of the state choir and perform at the TMEA Music Convention in San Antonio. So explain why you're pursuing the award. Explain what, what sort of the reward for the award is, what the award signifies. My third bullet point, every year over 5,000 students compete, only 112 students make it into the final choir. So if you can put numbers, put numbers. Numbers are always going to appeal to whoever's reading your resume. They can look and say, oh, you know, here were her odds, here's what she did, or in case of hours, here's the, num the number of hours she committed to this, earning this award. Um, numbers are always gonna be important and useful. So if you can come up with some, put them down. Finally, I just sort of summed up in my last bullet point, just an overall, this is what I did. For three years in a row, I've been first chair alto in the small school all-state choir. So I abbreviated it in my initial description, and then I sort of elaborated on it in the last bullet point, as well as sort of re-summarizing the fact that it was a three-year thing. Um, that can be big if you did something, you know, consistently throughout high school, you earned this award. I would note that in the honors and awards section. Activities. So list all the extracurriculars you participated in here. So community service, you're going to save, but anything else, so a summer camp, even if it was only for a week in the summer, put that on here. Obviously any bigger school commitments like sports or NHS, you're gonna list that here. Um, same if you did study abroad or something like that, that would go under activities. So just like the honors and awards, you're going to list the years that you participated as well as a title and then some brief summarizing. However, unlike honors and awards, you're going to list how many hours a week you participated in this, this activity and how many weeks out of the year you were participating in this activity. So then once you've got that sort of thought out and listed down, order your activities in order of most to least time spent and you can also kind of put most to least passionate. So if it's something that you can really speak on, you want that to be the first thing someone sees when they look at your resume. Also, if you held a leadership position, that should have its own bullet point in this activity. And you, again, are going to begin by clarifying what the activity is, what you did in it, and I would also mention any personal skills that you worked on or gained while in the activity. So, let me give you an example of what I have on my resume for an activity. So I called this activity University Interscholastic League Literary Criticism Team. So for anyone who lives here in Texas, might be familiar with it, it's just UIL Lit Crit. But you want to try not to put abbreviations into the list, especially when you're applying to schools that are out of state that might not be familiar with UIL and what that stands for, unless you really don't have the space to write everything out. So I would try to not abbreviate as much as you can. So I listed the years I spent participating in this activity and that I spent three hours a week, 24 weeks out of the year working on it. So here is the specific description, the bullet points that I provided. So I began, as you should begin yours, by very first bullet point, leadership position. If you have a leadership position, it's important you note it. So I was team captain and then I listed the years which I was team captain. So 11 comma 12, right next to it. The second bullet point was sort of explaining what the activity was. So I said, literary criticism, part of Texas's academic UIL, promotes literary analysis, familiarity of literary history and periods, and a knowledge of classical and international literary influences. So a brief summary, but something that gives them an idea, oh, this is something academic. You know, she's interested in literature. Make sure that you kind of have that in there. Uh, the third bullet point I have sort of summarized my achievements in, in this specific. So I listed in honors and awards that we went to regional. And then here, I also briefly mention it. I've advanced to regionals in 2018 and in 2019 as the third place score. So that's important to note. And then my final bullet point is about the personal skills I acquired, which I mentioned earlier. So as team captain, I put together the team and I'm in charge of choosing when we meet, where we meet, how we raise and allocate funds and what we study. So sort of my personal responsibilities, here are the things I'm doing, and here are the skills that I'm gaining from participating in this activity. So community service is the next section, and it's gonna be a lot like honors and awards, except for instead of listing hours per week, weeks per year, you're just gonna list total number of hours devoted. So that can be kind of hard to figure out, especially if you spend a lot of time um, on something. So it is okay to guesstimate here. There's no need to be like looking back through your calendar every single minute of that you participated in it. You can guesstimate. However, what you don't wanna do is wildly overestimate because the people reading your resume will notice. If something seems just completely not even reasonable, they're gonna take note of that. So you don't wanna do that. However, you may stumble across a situation like the one I was in when my family fostered dogs. So we'd foster them for 24 hours a day and we did that for several years. And so if I were to add up all those hours, that would add up to something completely ridiculous, like 
completely insane. So in that case, you can say something like nine months, three years, etc. But for the most part, you're gonna wanna log hours, total hours devoted. So once again, for community service, a bulleted description will be needed. So let's take a look at the description I gave for the dog fostering um, community service that I just mentioned. So here was my first bullet point. So the first bullet point was the community that I helped, the population that I served. So I helped mistreated dogs in the Dallas area recover and go on to loving forever families. So kind of a summary of what it is, but also the community that you're helping. The second bullet point was my specific activities that I'm performing. So what specifically did I do? So I take the dogs outside, clean up after them, bathe them, feed them, clean their kennels, and do general dog care and maintenance. Then the second bullet point was just a little bit more about something else I did, which was transporting dogs to Dallas Dog RRR adoption events and helping those events run smoothly. So you also are going to want to mention the specific organization that you're doing that community service uh, to assist with. So it doesn't have to be if you're doing it through someone, you don't necessarily have to list that, but if you're assisting a specific organization, you're going to want to put that within your bullet points. For community service, you can also list several services kind of in one. So something I did a lot at my school was run drives for various organizations. And so I did this through NHS, through student council. A lot of drives were happening, you know, toys for tots drives, books drives, clothing drives. So I just put a general bullet point. I just called it donation drives, and underneath that I listed sort of more specifically the individual drives and the communities that those drives were helping. But I didn't say specifically NHS clothing drive, you know, student council, Toys for Tots drive. I just kind of did general because then you have more hours and your reader has fewer sort of similar bullet points that they have to, to work their way through. Internships and employment. So I'm kind of putting these together because they're very similar and it's pretty self-explanatory. So you're going to put the organization you worked for, your job title, the hours a week you work, and the dates you started. So you might say May 2019 to you know June 2021, or you can say to present if it's something that you're still currently doing. So you can put a description for the section. However, it's going to be relatively clear um, what you're doing. So if you want to devote that time and that space to other things, if you feel like your internships and your jobs are not that integral to who you are as a student, there is no need to put a description. However, if you feel like it's really important to the kind of person you're presenting yourself as, then I would go ahead and add a bulleted list similar to what you have under um, activities, extracurriculars. Um, I would sort of use that same template for internships and employment. Personal interests, hobbies, and skills. Okay, this is the fun part. This is the part you should pick about three to five things that you're really passionate about, things you really enjoy. And this is your chance to kind of connect with your resume reader. I'm sure they see, you know, 800 kids who are all in student council, but when they read a resume that says, you know, I love vintage vinyls, I mean, that's something they can go, oh, I like that, or my daughter likes that, or they make that sort of more personal connection with you, and hopefully that'll kind of stay in their mind. So these should be things that you can speak on at length. It should be things that you really are, are passionate about. Um, and you don't want to worry about making them sound too cerebral, just as long as it's something that excites you. One other thing I want to mention before we dive into my example is that if it's something you're passionate about, um, you can find a way to have a pretty substantive contribution. So an example I always like to give is that if you're really into watching movies, you can start a movie club with your friends, which is just having them come over to your house once a month and <laughs> watching a movie. You can go to film festivals. You can participate in discussions about movies on online message boards or get involved with a theater near you. A lot of theaters will have outreach. So there's ways to, if you're passionate about something, you can do something like that to make it something really substantive to put onto your resume. So my example description is from my international travel entry. So I wanted to give this as an example because I know a lot of people are passionate about traveling, but there's a very specific way that you're going to present this on this resume. So my first bullet point is I have traveled to countries like Italy, Belgium, France, Turkey, Costa Rica, Panama, Canada, and Mexico. So this is important. When you say I like to travel, you need to list these specific places you've been to. You can't just kind of say I've been to several continents. You need to list the specific countries so they know here is what she's doing, here is how she's actually traveling. My second bullet point was I consider it very important to be a global citizen and I love learning about different cultures when I travel. So why is that traveling experience important to me? You know, I've listed the places I've gone, now why am I going there? 
My third bullet point is languages have always fascinated me and I always try to pick up a few words wherever I go. I especially love traveling to Central America because I get to practice and improve my Spanish in an immersive environment. So tying it back to a separate passion of mine and saying, here's another reason why traveling is important to me. And then my fourth bullet point was just one more kind of expansion on a personal skill that traveling is helping me improve. Visiting historical sites like the ruins of Pompeii or ancient castles in Turkey also interests me. I'm intrigued by world history and love seeing ancient things as they serve as reminders of the people that came before us. So how am I using traveling to sort of improve who I am as a person and what skills is it helping me work on and gain? So now you have all of your sections. Your resume is probably getting a little long at this point. That's okay. Remember, it doesn't have to be a single page. However, make sure to keep it to around max five bullet points. You want it to be something that the reader can easily read through. You don't want them looking at walls of text, right? So you want to be able to really expand on the things you're passionate about, but make sure that you're still keeping it somewhat concise. Again, this is just my take on the college resume. So I got a lot of positive feedback from admissions officers about it. And of course I got into every place I applied to with it, but that does not mean that it is necessarily going to be the best resume fit for you. So make sure you take that time and explore. Just as a reminder, I do have those alternate resources linked down in the description below, along with some sort of reminders for things that you should be considering while making the college resume. Another thing to really keep in mind is that if you do this resume early, it can be such a valuable tool for the whole Whole entire application process. So the sooner you can start on it, just knock it out, then you'll have that as a reminder the whole rest of the college application process time. So as always, thank you guys so much for coming to camp.